episode of the Mother Review Show, where the good movies are always reviewed. Okay, hey, back in the Mother Review. And alrighty, my spirits are back up. I'm much more happier after getting those two monstrosities out of my system that I sat through Blood Rain and Date Movie. Now is the time to treat myself to a much better film. A film that I did not know what to expect going in. In. I thought it was just going to be a dumb action film, but everybody was like telling me, dude, you're going to be blown away, there's more to it, it is an awesome film. So I went in, in what not knowing what to expect, because when I saw the trailer, that's what I thought I was going to get, I thought I was going to get a dumb action film, and I love the trailer, I really thought it was an awesome trailer, I like how it was shot, I like the use of the song, uh, by a muse that running out, our time is running out. I thought it went well with the film. But when I walked out, I was surprised. I was surprised at what I got. And I now understood what my friends were talking about. And what film is that, you may be asking? That film is none other than... Running Scared, Baby. Yeah. Now, Running Scared, for those who don't know, I'm pretty sure a lot of you don't know, uh, this was a film made in 2006. It's written and directed by uh, Wayne Kramer. Now, Wayne Kramer, for those who don't know, uh, this is the guy who did the story and screenplay for uh, Mine Hunters, which I already reviewed. Um, he also directed The Cooler with uh, William H. Macy and Alec Baldwin. And this film, this was the next film he did after the independent success of Cooler, and he was looking to get another project off the ground, and he got to work writing a, the script for this movie, which he chose to make a gritty 70s fast-paced thriller with a few Martin twists. This caught the attention of Media Aid Entertainment. The, that was the same team that was behind uh, Santa Slay with uh, Bill Goldberg. And they liked the script so much much and because they were independent they gave Wayne the freedom to do what he wanted with a budget of 17 million so he got to work with the film and they got their cast together originally he actually wanted uh Thomas Jane yes deep the guy from Deep Blue Sea and the Punisher to play the main character but he had to back out due to scheduling conflicts but they got someone else who I think was a great choice to go with um and they got the rest of their cast together. And on Jimmy Kimmel, the actor revealed that even though the movie was set in New York, they had to film it in Prague to keep the cost low. Uh, there were a few, there were a couple of scenes shot in New Jersey, like some of the exteriors and like one particular restaurant. But uh, some of the indoor areas, they had to uh, shoot in other in Prague and everything. Thing. And when making the film, Wayne didn't want the CGI crazy. He wanted it limited so with a few sprinkled in so he could focus on practical effects. And shooting lasted until summer of 2004, and it was time to submit to the MPAA, who, to Wayne's surprise, didn't give the movie an NC-17 rating, but rather the R rating, which kind of surprises me considering what gets cut from movies today day like you look at hard target and how butchered that was by the mpa i don't know how this got off but it took a year for them to find distribution because of the material in the film until new line bought the film and with a budget of 15 million despite having a super bowl spot uh weeks before the movie's release the movie opened on february 24th where it failed at the box office opening to number eight at the box office where it only made over a million dollars and that weekend, the number one movie was Medea's Family Reunion. I shit you not, this movie got beat by a Tyler Perry film. And in the coming weeks, it continued to bomb, and we'll get the final results about how bad it did. I really don't want to see it. But despite that, the film received mixed reviews from critics, which I think is better than negative. On Rotten Tomatoes, it is a 41%. For critics, they applauded the film for its energy and violence, but they felt the film lacked any substance, which to me is complete bullshit. I'm sorry to say, I'll get to why later. Like, you had people like Liam Lacey of Globe and Mail who said, Ethnic stereotyping, moral qualms, and plot improbabilities aside, you just wish a movie like Running Scared wasn't so anxious to be exciting all the time. It gets so monotonous. Or whatever. 
I don't know the word. Richard Roper also gave the movie a negative review, awarding it a thumbs down on Ebert and Roper. Even though he was fine with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, he gave this film a thumbs down because it's ugly and it's vile and it's disgusting and it's creepy and it just got tiresome. Oh, come on, Richard. I mean, I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. You guys have seen my thoughts on that, but really? The film... Did get some positive reviews, like Roger Ebert, who gave the film three out of four stars, saying, Running Scare goes so far over the top, it circumvigiates the top, and back on itself, it's the Mobius strip of over-the-topness. I am in awe. And Scott Weinberg also gave the movie a positive review, saying, I see Running Scared as a slick, sick, and, sil and sly satire of all action conventions, but maybe the I'm just nuts. And this other site, which has a funny name, Willy Waffle of Waffle.com, also gave the movie a positive review, saying, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Paul Walker doesn't stink in Running Scared. In fact, Running Scared is a decent guy's night out movie. And I already reviewed who the main actor is, but the audience, I think, also liked it, because on the audience side, it's a 79% on IMDb, is a 7.4 out of 10. So, yeah. And right off the bat, I'm just going to say it right now. You guys probably are expecting this. I agree with the audience. This movie is bad ass. And I loved every single action filled, grimy, dark, mean spirited did angle that Wayne Kramer brought to this brought to this film. And it sucks that this movie bombed. This movie should have been number one. It deserved the number one spot. Why didn't this get the numbers that friggin' Date movie got? Why does that film get the number one spot? It did not deserve it. I don't get how that got the number one spot and this movie did it. This movie has so much more going for it than just being an action film. And screw the bullshit. Oh, zero out of ten because I got my panties in a twist and I'm disturbed. Screw that. Wayne Kramer took us on a ride back to the 70s and 80s action films and succeeded. And I'll get into why later I love this film. And I hope more movies like this get made because it is just, it's a great film. And I agree with everybody. I'm in awe with how over the top it is, but it works to the film's advantage. And I'll get into why later. But when the cast of this film, we got Paul Walker, as I said, as the main guy, Joey. And for those who don't know, Paul Walker, this is the guy from uh, The Fast and the Furious. It's sequel to Fast, Too Furious. He's not going to be in Tokyo Drift. Um, he was also in Joyride. He's in Into the Blue, among many others. Uh, you got this one kid named Cameron Bright from The Butterfly Effect. He's going to be in X-Men The Last Stand. You got Vera Farmigia. I don't know how I say her name. Vera Farmagia from The Mancurian Candidate. Uh, Carl Roden from The Born Supremacy. Uh... You also got a Chas Palminteri playing a cop this time. This is the dude from The Bronx Tale. He was Monty and uh, Stuart, not Monty, Smokey in uh, Stuart Little, uh, the cat. Um, he's also in The Usual Suspect. He also got Elizabeth Mitchell in this. This is the woman from The Santa Claus 2. She would become uh, Tim Allen's wife in that. Uh, Bruce Altman from The Quiz Show is in this. So he got a good cast, a very good cast in this. Some of them... Some of them, you, if you look closely, you may recognize some of them, but I'll get into how they do later. But the plot of this movie is we meet Joey Gazelle, played by Paul Walker, who's a low-level thug that basically destroys evidence in a particular situation, and he's doing that to give a good life for his family. His son, Nick, played by Alex Newberger, and his wife, uh, Teresa, played by Vera Farmigia. But during a deal, a group of corrupt cops uh, ambush the deal, and a shootout ensues where they get away scot-free. But being, they ha being that they have the murder weapon and they have to get rid of it, they trust Joey with finding a way to destroy the evidence so they don't get caught. So he takes it home and he puts it in his evidence bag uh, under the... Uh, under the basement, uh, well, in a little cupboard, I should say, but he puts it in an evidence bag so his fingerprints don't get caught. But as he was doing that, his son and this other kid named Oleg, played by Cameron Bright, who were playing hockey in the basement, they saw what was going on. And Oleg, who is going through a horrible relationship with his abusive and alcoholic father at home, 
Ohm, who does nothing for the family and is a complete douchebag to him and his wife, uh, basically, um, he... He takes the gun from the place and brings it home where at some point in the night he shoots his dad, not to death, but he wounds him and runs off with the weapon, which puts him in hot water because now that he lost the gun, his life is on the line, him and his family, and they may now become the targets of the guy who started the deal. So Joey sets out to find the gun and Oleg. And it quickly turns into a night of hell as they encounter such dark things as cops led by Detective Rydell, played by Chaz Palminteri, who has been scattered all over the city trying to find the weapon and trying to prove that somehow they're involved with this whole thing. Uh, prostitutes also get involved, Mac Daddy pimps, crazy homeless people, crazy hockey players, and worst of all, pedophiles. Will Joey be... And it and basically, this turns into a long night long night for them all. It turns into a night of hell. Will Joey make it through this night of hell and find the gun, or will the groups gain up on him and bring him down? <sighs> Running Scared, as I said, is an excellent film. It's the kind of movie that if you go in expecting a straight action movie, you're going to get much more. This is such a throwback to 70s movies like Straw Dogs, No Holds Barreled, and a raw, gritty nature that will make modern moviegoers feel like they're from the 70s. Because I wasn't expecting just the straight action film. But it is much more, because the story itself... I like Wayne Kramer's idea of what he was going with. And sort of urban fairy tale that he talked about with uh, Harry Knowles on Ain't It Cool News with the main character. Because each person the kid meets is somehow connected to anything of fiction like... The whole thing with the prostitute is a whole thing to uh, the fairy godmother, uh, um, sort of like, uh, also, um, there's a few others, but, but they're all there. If you look closely, you notice them. But I, I thought that was an interesting angle they went with. It's not often you have the idea of an urban sort of fairy tale and a dark one at that. Like, this is a dark movie with how it deals with this particular subject matter. And I thought... It was handled well, and I like the fact that each character has their own sort of signal that kind of relates to that particular particular fairy tale. And I like the fact that he did pussy out with touching on these angles. He touches upon the thieves that I can't believe these studios let him touch upon without asking him, hey, can you rewrite, tone this down a little bit? But because there is some heavy-handed stuff that they... Go that they touch upon in this film. And if you cannot handle that and think like, oh, I'm offended by everything, no offense if you are, but I wouldn't recommend this film. But there are definitely some, if you are, if you do have the raw mindset that you want in an action film, I highly recommend this film. So yeah. Be and if, you and they will make your jaw drop because even like, even with me, I could believe some of the stuff they did. And even my brother, who I saw the film with, uh, he had his jaw drop. And it's well done. It really touches upon this, these themes without being so disgusting or exploitive. Like the pedophile scene, which I'll touch upon later, which I think is one of the best scenes in this film. I think that, not because, oh, I'm a perv, but I think it's the most well-written. I think it's the most well-shot. And I think it's how they did the scene was really well done. Done. And just this whole thing, the lengths that Joey goes through with to get the gun, even at one point screaming his head off, uh, off when he once again goes to this particular spot where this guy who he thinks has the gun, it isn't there, he screams his ass off, which... Is understandable. It's really understandable. And despite taking place in the span of one night, which may seem like a short film, a lot happens. Really, a lot happens. It's like, okay, you think they're going to be in the street. You think that it's going to take, you think they're going to end up there. But a lot happens. They go from the, the street to the diners to the to the homeless, to the park, to this crazy pedophile building, and even to, like, a dang hockey ring. Yes, you heard me right, a hockey rig.
That is just... <laughs> wow. But yeah, and it's done really well. It make, it's a, lo a lot happens without having too many things happen at once. The story arcs are, they're definitely touched upon really well. They're not, they're not, there isn't too many going on at the same time. So overall, I think the story is great. I really think the story is great. It's not kind of convoluted or confusing. It's not, it's not over the top. I think it's great. Well, it is over the top, actually. I take that back, but it's subtle and it's over the topness. It's not like, um, what's a, you know, like, I hate to bring this up. Don't watch this film, guys. Don't look into it because uh, I know I have family members watching this. It's not August Underground. Ground. It's definitely not that. I'm. I'm. In, I beg you guys, please do not look at August Underground. It's a dis disgusting film. But this is much better than that shit. But um, so overall, the story is great. And I also think there's a Wayne Kramer does a great job directing the film. You can definitely tell the budget is on the screen. I like the grimy look he gave the film with the lighting and the color of black on the street and the, how he creates this feeling that somebody could be behind you with the gun and even that scene with the child molesters, even though it's colorful, there's this certain like feel to it. Like it's sort of like how it's shot. It's shot like one of those like, videos that say, like, watch out for strangers, watch out for pedophiles, like, that sort of thing with the, with the score and everything, like, this innocence in the area, but there's still this sense of, it, it, but there's still this sense of eeriness and creepiness, even though they haven't revealed what exactly they're doing, just how they did it, I think is really well done, was really well done, and I appreciate Wayne Kramer, how he did this scene, and he didn't back down. He didn't pull any punches with this scene without, without resorting to gross out images of like I don't know him, him of a kid being molested or something. I don't, I hate to put an image in that head, but um. Oh yeah, I think they did a great job. Job, and I think it's shot well too. I like all the action that's shot in a wide angle. There's definitely a lot of violence on the screen. I'll get to that later. But the production design is also great. I like how, because as I said, this movie was shot in Prague, and I didn't even, I couldn't even tell this was Prague. It looks so much like New York with the rundown area, the buildings, and everything, thing, and how they hide like some of the areas that are related to Prague. It was done really well, and it really looked like New York. And I like some of the... I like the look... Going back to the pedophile scene, I like the look of the house. Like, this is how I would see a pedophile's house looking like. Granted, I've never been in one. I don't want to be in one. I know I keep touching upon that scene, but it's really the creepiest scene of the movie, and I think it's the most well done, because where... If so many... If there were particular, because there are shitty directors that would touch this scene, and they'll be like, "Oh, let's make it extreme, extreme." Because people love movies like Hostel, and I grant I love Hostel and Saw, but those are adults getting it; they're not little kids. And I, it's different when you're doing it with an adult or a teenager, like in Friday the Thirteenth or um, Nightmare on Elm Street, even Saw and Hostel, because they're adults or teens getting it. This, if you're doing it to a little kid, it just seems wrong. Wrong. But, yeah, that production design with the sh with how they shot it and everything, thing with the whole scene of, like, him in the house and has, like, this toy area and, like, just how they did that scene I thought was great. I thought it was really well done and just the look of it. I like the hockey scene, like the ending scene in the hockey fight, how they designed that area with the glow and the dark paint on the bottom um, and like how the blood's like going onto the floor and just the fact that these guys were able to stand in that area, like on the freaking ice without slipping, I thought was amazing. Thing. And like how they sh and just like the pain in that scene, which I'll get to later. But I thought the pain on the floor it, it, and added to a cool um, sort of effect to it. But going back to like what I said earlier, I like how Wayne symbolized their fairy tale counterparts. Like going again, going I keep harkening back to that scene with the pedophiles. Like 
go with the silhouette with the of like uh, Elizabeth Mitchell looking through into the bathroom because he's trying to call for help, which I'll get to later. In with her finger stretching, it makes like this weird silhouette. I thought it had a creepy vibe to it. I thought it really worked, and I thought it was really well choreographed. The scene, well, not choreographed, really well shot. The scene. So yeah, this film is really well shot, and I, I thought the editing was really interesting. Yeah, it is flashy, and that's one of the problems I had with a film like Venom, where the editing was so flashy that you couldn't tell what's going on, but I honestly think it worked to the film's advantage. I thought it created this feel to it that was really raw and gritty and really well done, sort of like this, sort of in the way this whole... Um, this raw nature to it, like, sort of like a newscast a little bit, like the opening of the Amityville Horror when they're going through the newscast, it's like, like that sort of thing. thing. And I like this, this one particular scene where I thought the editing was used amazingly was when, uh, was when uh, Joey actually goes to the house where the kid shot his dad, and he's looking around, and he looks back, he looks out the window where the shot happened, because he finds out, because the bullet actually went right into the house, and he's trying to figure out, like, what exactly is going on, and I, and basically what happens is, as the scene is going on, it sort of, like, rewinds itself a little bit, kind of, like, taking him where he is, like, how it happened and everything, and... And in the scene right there, it's not Paul Walker. It's actually his brother doing that scene. I thought that was that was a genius. His twin brother, there, there. And I thought it was a really cool effect how they did it. So, yeah, it gave it that sense of style. It gave it that grim style. It gave it that urban sort of style. It gave it like that whole creepy. Well, that creepy gave it whole. It gave it something different. So yeah, and I'm glad they're doing that with this film. So yeah, I thought it worked out well. But moving on to the acting, the acting in the film is great. Even though it would have been interesting to see Thomas Jane as the lead, Paul Walker is definitely the next guy I would have gone to. I'd probably say this is my favorite role with him. No questions asked. I mean, I like Joyride. I like the Fast and the Furious film. But I'd say this is his best performance because it's the most adult he's been in a film. Because we're in other films, he's a likable lead, but he's mostly playing a teeny bopper, sort of like shirtless sort of guy. Like, look at the pecs, all that. Here, he's playing a really flawed character. He's playing a guy, guy who's probably the most adult I've seen from him in any films because... You see him taking part in this crime syndicate. He's trying to give his family the best life he can. And then this situation happens and he's running everywhere he can to find that gun. And everywhere he goes, it's not there. And he's getting the shit kicked out of him mentally, emotionally, and physically. physically and he's trying everything he can. And it's really the making his friend, his the guy he did the deal with, impatient. And it's just... You really feel for the guy. And everywhere, and even to the point where he lets out this huge scream, it's like, yeah, I'd do the same thing if I was caught in this situation. So, yeah. And I also like the fact that he's willing to uh, get his kid involved, which, yeah, could be a douche idea, but at the same time, the kid is friends with the kid who shot his dad, so technically it does involve him. But I also kind of see it as him kind of showing him, like, this is what we go, this is what I do, this is what I have to go through, and, and stay away from this, I did this, I did this, I don't want you in the same vein, and then, and then you'll find out the shock, the surprise about him at the end, but I thought he did a good job, I thought, he, I really thought he did a great job, and I definitely think this is his best performance, I also thought the kids did a great job, they weren't annoying, and they had some good lines, I like that kid Oleg. I thought he did a good job. He's not the annoying sort of like, look at me, high-pitched voice, uh, saying stupid stuff. Stuff. I like the one thing he says when, before he shoots his dad, who his dad deserved it. His dad deserved to get shot. Because he, he's watching John Wayne. He's like, John Wayne's, I gotta say this because it's a quote from the film, so if you're offended, I'm sorry, but John Wayne's a faggot. 
because the dad is a fan of John Wayne. Uh, that kid was badass, uh, and he and he isn't wimpy. Doesn't rely on, on everybody to do it, do everything for him. Only in situation when he does need help, like the part with the two sick parents, who he get the who, as I said, get the idea that they're pedophiles, and he calls the mom. He's not waiting for her to realize. Oh my God, I need he needs help. He actually goes to the medicine cabinet and he grabs like the pill bottle in the bathroom so he can give the address so he's not useless or annoying and the other kid I also thought did a great job he tries to get him to hide the gun as well like in the toilet which of course doesn't go over well so they did well for what they had to do I like the two kids I definitely feel these are some of the better kid actors his wife played by Vera Farmigia however you say her name I also thought did a great job job um, she was likable, and women, and I just want to say this right now, women love to say, oh, women are treated as useless in movies, oh, we always have to, if we are going to be action heroes, we always are in tight, the tight, skinny uniform and all that, that, look at this film, look at freaking running scared, scared, who is the first person that this kid goes to, to, even though, like, who is the first person that this kid runs into? It's obviously not Paul Walker, but it's her. And she goes to help her from those weird parents. She's not, she's dressed in casual uniform with the pants and everything. Thing, and she goes to help her from those weird parents. W weird is too nice. Sick Fs is the best way to say it. Because it's definitely not right what they do. But she saves him and pulls a gun on him. And I do love how before she shoots them... Them and they're going on about how all sick they are. She calls the cops. It's like, hello, I heard shots at at A A B and C. I don't remember the building's name. And she shoots him herself, which I'm sure anybody would do. So all the women who love to say they're useless in movies or they just want they're portrayed as sexual and all that that which I don't mind sometimes, but um. I mean, guys may mind, but I mean, some women may mind. But if you do, that's fine. I just don't mind it, but um. That should do that, but if you are gonna do it, um, do it if you do feel us. Ah, I'll jump ahead, but I bottom line, I don't mind it. I'm sticking by that. That I'm not it because it's just a movie, and I know women should be treated like that. But they keep they keep forgetting that these movies, um, these aren't these movies like this don't make the women sexy. See, and she uses a gun, and her character isn't about being sexy. She's not like, like in the Tomb Raider game, so she's in the short shorts. Short shorts, again, I don't mind, but in this type of situation, I like the fact that they made her a tough girl. And Vera Farmiga is smoking hot, I'll say that. But I thought she did a great job, and she was likable, bull, and she didn't resort to eye candy with the character. It's just a great performance. She's tough, she's strong, she's not annoying. Knowing, I just thought she did very well. And Chaz Palminteri is also here, and I think he does a great job. He's great as this cop who wants to find the weapon. He's jumping through hoops to find them. He's fun to watch, and just how he talks and everything. He's still giving, like, the Bronx Tale sort of voice. Voice, so you kind of see, like, he's doing that all over. He's still giving that tough guy persona, sort of like the mob sort of feel to the character. He was great. He's Chas Palminteri. You pull him on screen, he can accomplish anything. I love. He's a great actor. There, him and Paul Servino can play great. I always get those two guys confused: Paul Servino and uh, Chas Palminteri, because they both look a little like. Even though Paul Servino looks like what would happen if he got fat, but he does a. Chas does a great job in this film. It's great to see him in this role. Um, other cast members like Elizabeth Mitchell, for, who plays one of the pedophiles, and Bruce Altman as her husband. And they have this weird scene, as I said, with the toy room. And this is really creepy, where they have like this camera set up in the room, and they film them. It's nothing too graphic, but to the point where it, comes, where it becomes uncomfortable. But it is subtle that you get the point across. It just acknowledges how definitely in need of... Of and of some, of some electric chair they could use, um, and I'm surprised they took the part. They especially since I saw Elizabeth Mitchell as Mrs. Claus at Santa Claus too, Ooh, And Bruce Altman I also think does a good job too. So the acting is great in this film. Each person gives a great performance. They don't go over the top or ham it up for the camera. Uh, 
And they just do, they give them really convincing, they're saying, especially for the setting that this takes place in. So, yeah. And, of course, the action is great. This definitely doesn't hold back on the violence. When people are shot, they're getting shot. Like, the opening scene where that one dude, I love how it's filmed, like, say the gun is right here and it's shooting, it shoots, the bullet flies out, and you see the guy literally fly back. Pra mix of practical blood squibs, CGI, and stunt doubles flying back. At times, the CGI was, was also used for the stunt double, but still, still, it all looks great. It all blends together perfectly. Everybody gets shot. When they're getting shot, they're getting shot. One guy gets shot in the dick, too. How do you not, how can you not ignore that? And just so many bloody stuff happens. A guy gets his ankle sliced open. A guy, one guy, people get, sh I already said people get shot. Shot. A guy gets, like, Paul Walker later on when he goes to the hockey ring and he's held down on the floor. They literally, they take, like, a hockey stick and they literally put the puck on the ground and they start shooting it at his face. And it's like, oh, that's got to hurt. And... The pain is really felt in this film. The pain is definitely felt. So, yeah. I love this damn movie. And honestly, I have no problems with it. It moves at a fast pace. It's well made. The performances are great. And the effects are fantastic. And to sit here and think of a problem I had would just be nitpicking. So, if you're wondering, during, is there a great action film out? Please, and I mean please, go see Running Scared. It is, to me, I think one of the best action films I've ever seen I, uh, of the 2000s. I think it's really up there with others that I love, like Triple X and Four Brothers and, um, and what else? I wouldn't say the Dukes of Hazard because that's not a, that's a comedy too. But I'll put that as an action. But Dukes of Hazard, um, what else? The Chronicles of Riddick, all those films. Those are some of the best action films of the 2000s so far. It this to me, this is one of them. This is just one of the better noir sort of action films I've seen. So yeah, please give this movie the respect it deserves and. Because we need new, because we need more movies like this. This is like one of those films that that I hope people see and they hope like, and I hope they beg for like more of them because this deserves any time a summer, b summer, spring, fall, winter. It deserves to be seen anywhere. This film is just awesome, and it didn't deserve to bomb in any shape or form. And I want to say f you to date movie for getting the number one spot. Spot and F you to Medea's family reunion for taking the spot from this. I know that's mean to say, uh, but they're just, I'm not talking about the people making it. I'm not putting them down or anything. Well, technically, Eric, Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer because they suck as directors, but they don't care. They're swimming in cash. This film deserved it. So when it all comes down to it, I give Running Scared a 10 out of 10, and it deserves it. It therefore gets my seal of approval. Definitely, I think, an action film that should be seen by anybody who is looking for an R-rated action awesomeness. So, yeah, that is my review for Running Scared, and next time I'm going to do a review on Dave Chappelle's Block Party. You'll see my thoughts on that, and then later on, I'm so excited because I'm going to give my review on the Hills Have Eyes remake, and you'll see my thoughts on that later, and... Boy, am I going to have some fun talking about that. And then I got a review of The Transporter coming. Been wanting to talk about this for a while. Um, see my thoughts on this. And then I have a review of Slither Plan. I'm so pumped to talk about that, Phil, too. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Running Scared. Did you guys like the film like I did? Or, or are you one of the few that got offended by it? It's, no offense if you did. That's on you. Uh... If you did, you can handle it. That's for you guys. But I love the film. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, but... Yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Give that video a thumbs up. 
And I'll see you guys next time in the wonderful world of YouTube. Bye.